Hello and welcome to Excel Video 399. I'm Nate Moore. This is a slide from a presentation on business intelligence I did at MGMA's last annual conference. And what I've done is I've gathered up all the future appointments for practice. And then from that list of future appointments, we're looking for specific things that the staff needs to know about before the patient gets there. Uh, things like, hey, th this patient's listed as inactive, or this patient might have a balance in collections, or this patient has an insurance where there's issues, whether or not we're in network, or this patient might be seeing the wrong provider, or any of a number of different problems. What we do is we scoop up all the appointments and send a list of potential problems via email every morning. So you go into the office, there's your email, there's your work list, there's what you need to do today, and watch out for these upcoming appointments. If something like that would help your practice, let's talk. I want to talk about structured table references today, and to be honest, they're kind of as complicated as they sound, or at least they look bad. Let me show you what I mean. This is a structured table reference. The bracket, at, bracket, the name of the column, bracket, bracket, times 0.05, or this is a structured table reference. Table 1, totals, we've got two brackets and we got a pound sign. There's all this stuff going on. How do I ever write these things? And the truth is, structured table references are a whole lot easier to read than they are to write. When I need to write a structured table reference like this, what I'll do is I'll just say, hey, I'll equals this times 0.05 or whatever. See how Microsoft is building the formula for me as I go? I can just hit enter here and it'll calculate for me. I don't want to remember where do I need a bracket and where do I need an at sign? Wait a minute, what, what about that pound sign? I don't want to do, deal with any of that. What I'm going to do is just build a formula like this or let's say this times 0.5 or whatever like that and let Excel create the syntax for me. But once it's created, look at the difference between these two formulas. If you look at this formula, it's equals eight, H8008, whatever that is. This is the same data but it's table one, the totals row for the patient AR balance column. And once you understand the syntax and what it's doing, you don't need to be able to write it. You just need to be able to understand enough to read it. Table one is the name of my table, and I can change that table. Let's do that right now. If I go to the design menu, you know, this is appointments, so I'm going to rename table one appointments. Now let's come back and look at my formula again. So I've got appointments, the totals row, and patient AR balance is the name of the column. That's a lot easier to read and to manage than this is. Well, you've just got a blank formula. And again, I've, the thing to do is not to worry about the syntax and type all that in. If you want to, I put the hyperlink here. You can read Excel's explanation of how the syntax works if you want. For me, I don't care. All I want to do is just arrow over or click over to the, the cell I want to use in my formula and then just type my formula and let Excel do the syntax. Once the syntax is there, it's easy to say, oh, I'm in the appointments table. I'm going to take the patient error balance column. I'm going to multiply by 0.5. Easier to manage than a bunch of just, you know, A, B, C kind of references out there. It makes your life a little easier, especially if you're trying to get somebody else to understand the formulas on your spreadsheet. That's what I want to talk about with structure table references. Stay tuned next time. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about design tools and how to make uh, your table and look pretty and how to make it do some things that can make it easier to manage the data you've got. Look forward to talking about that with you next time. Thanks for watching.